Alright, so happy to see you here. Welcome back to my channel. Hi, I'm Asimatics. Today we have a great question, great and I would say like a relaxing question from the 7th or 8th grade algebra. x plus y equal to 10 and a product xy equal to 100 and we need to find our x and y. We can't do that by inspection, I guess, because it's really hard to guess what is the sum of two elements which is equal to 10 and the product of two variables equal to 100. It's hard, so right now let's try to solve it algebraically and step by step. First of all, let's look closely at our first equation, x plus y equal to 10. From here we can express our y. So our y equal to 10 minus x. So let's start with that. So we have our y equal to 10 minus x. Okay, our y equal to 10 minus x. And so right now let's plug in this y instead of this y right here. So let's plug in 10 minus x instead of this y into the second equation. So this is our first first equation and from second equation right here we're gonna plug in instead of y we're gonna plug in 10 minus x so let's do this so we have x inside parentheses we have 10 minus x equal to 100 equal to 100 okay right now let's simplify it we have a basic looks like quadratic equation so let's do this right now so we have 10x 10x minus x square yeah minus x square equal to 100. Right now let's change an order because it looks like this is a quadratic equation but let's change an order a little bit. We prefer minus x square on the first position so we have minus x square on the first position. The next we have plus 10x plus 10x and we have minus 100 minus 100 equal to 0. The last tricky move, let's multiply both sides by minus 1 because we prefer a uh, positive value right here, positive uh, variable, yeah, but we don't need this minus, we need to need it, so let's multiply both sides by minus 1. Doesn't matter, multiplication, division, we have multiplication, so let's multiply both sides. As a result, we have x square minus 10x and plus 100, plus 100 equal to 0. Basic quadratic equation. So let's solve it. Let's find first of all, let's find our discriminant. Let's see what will happen. So our discriminant equal to we have b square minus 4ac. Basic school formula b square minus 4ac, which is equal to let's plug in each of these elements into this spot. From here, a is equal to 1, b is equal to minus 10, and c is equal to 100. So very basic element. So let's do this b square. We have minus 10 uh, square. Yeah minus 4 times 1 and times 100. And I see right now that my discriminant is uh, negative. Let's do this. So we have right here 100 minus 4 times 1 times 100 equal to 400. Yes, yeah, you can see we find our discriminant. Our discriminant is, is negative. Okay, we have 100 minus 400 equal to equal to minus 300. This is our, our discriminant. So right now let's plug in this discriminant into our formula. We have basic school formula x first and second equal to we have minus b plus minus square root of discriminant and all over all over to a. Let's plug in. Right here we have minus b but b equal to minus 10 so our b is equal to mm, right here we have uh, 10. Okay plus minus square root of discriminant square root of minus uh, 300 yeah minus 300 and all over we divided by 2a by 2 times 2 times 1. What we can do right here we can easily mm, express this minus 300 as uh, square root of minus 1 times square root of 100 and times square root of 3 okay in terms of school property we can write it as 10 plus minus square root of we have minus 1 times 100 and times 3. And in terms of school property, I'm going to write this property, let's write it for example right here when we have square root of a times b, we can write it as square root of a times square root square root of b. We can easily split it right here, so as a result what do we have? We have 10 plus minus square root of minus 1 times square root of 100 and times square root of, of 3. Okay, from here. And we divide all of the thing by by two. Right now, this is our complex unit. This is our complex unit because in terms of real numbers, there is no way we can find square root of minus one. So as a result, what do we have? 10 plus minus. Right here we have i. Right here we have square root of 100 equal to 10. So we have 10 i square root of 3. And we divide it by 2. And final tricky move, because it's really hard to work with this fraction, we can easily divide this fraction by, by 2. So as a result, so what do we have? We have 5, we have 5 plus minus 5i square root of 
square root of 3. So what we're going to do next, here is our, here is our x first and second, so let's write it, so we have x first x first equal to x first equal let's go with the plus sign so we have 5 plus 5i square root of 3 this is our x first and we also have like x second with the negative sign equal to 5 minus 5i square root square root of 3 okay so what are we going to do next right now let's go back to our substitution so we have right here we have a substitution that our y equal to 10 minus x so here's our substitution so y equal to 10 minus x let's plug in this x right here and right here into this into this spot let's do this so we have y first equal to 10 minus x first 10 minus x first so let's plug in this x first into this into this spot as a result we have y first equal to 10 minus we have 5 plus 5i square root of 3 so as a result y first equal to 10 minus 5 and minus 5i square root of 3 so as a result our y first equal to right here we have 5 so 5 minus 5i square root of 3. So as you can see, we find our uh, our y first, and according to the same logic, let's find our uh, y second. So from here, y second is equal to 10 minus x second. So 10 minus x, x second. Okay, so let's do this. So we have y second is equal to 10 minus, right here we have this x second. So 5 minus 5i square root of 3. As a result, y second equal to 10 minus 5 plus 5i square root of 3. So our y second is equal to 5 plus 5i square root of 3. As you can see, we solved this question, but finally, let's check our, our solution. So first of all, let's write our pairs. It looks like our answer, but but let's check it, okay? So this is our answer, let's write our answer, and in the end, we will check our solution. So uh, as you can see right here, we have x, y, two pairs. The first pair we have with the y first, x first, y first. So we have five plus five i square root of three, and the second five minus five i square root of three. This is our first pair. And the second pair we have five minus five i square root of three, and 5 plus 5i square root of, of 3. Right now, let's let's check our solution. Let's check, for example, this pair. We don't need to check this pair, and uh, we don't need to check both pairs, because in the beginning, what we had, we had x plus y equal to 10, which is addition, like it doesn't matter, y plus x, x plus y, so addition is, is a great operation, mathematical operation for us, and the product is also a great, x, y equal to 100, so I want to say that doesn't matter, we can easily change positions, and doesn't matter, we can easily check this one, this one, this is absolutely the same thing for us, for example, let's check, let's check this one, let's start with addition, let's prove this root, first of all, let's add both both x and y, x plus y equal to 10. So as a result, what do we have? 5 plus 5i square root of 3 plus 5 minus 5i square root of 3 equal to 10. Let's check it. First of all, we can cancel our, uh, our complex part, and as a result, we have 5 plus 5 equal to 10, so 10 equal to 10. Yeah, addition is, is great. And finally, let's check our, our multiplication. Addition is great, and right here on the bottom, let's check our multiplication. So let's check our product. Let's do this right now. So we have 5 plus 5i square root of 3 times 5 minus 5i square root of 3, a product, equal to 100. Let's see what will happen. But first of all, we can still multiply parentheses by parentheses, but if you look closely, this is our formula. If you remember a formula, so we have a square minus b square equal to, we have a minus b and times a plus b. And if you look closely, this is our difference of two squares, but in terms of like general formula, we can't say it, but if you're talking about this is a, this is our b, this is our a, and this is our b. So you're talking about a plus b, a minus b. So this is our difference of two squares. So as a result, we have 5 square minus, we have 5i square root of 3. We raise this to the second power, need to be equal to 100, okay? Right now we have 5 square equal to equal to 25 minus, we need to raise each of these elements into the, to this second power. So we have 5 square 25 times i square equal to minus 1 and times square root of 3 to the second power equal to 3. So as a result, what do we have? We have 25 square root of, uh, right here we have minus with this minus, we have plus 25 times 3 equal to 75. So as you can see, absolutely correct expression. So a product is also great, addition is also great, so our root is 
is great, is great for us. So this is my explanation to this challenge. This is like a basic school question from from uh, seventh or eighth grade. I don't remember exactly, but this is like a basic question. And a tricky moment right here is a complex part. If like for example, if we had like mm, a real number part, it's like a basic school question. But with the complex part, as you can see, this question is a little bit complicated. We need to know about complex solutions. We need to know about complex roots. So it's also really great to remember it to learn about this part of mathematics about complex numbers here's my answer to this question here's my solution you can also write a question down into the comment section write your notes about this question it will be really interesting to read about it and thank you everyone for your time wish you all the best in your life see you in the next videos